What's going on, good people? Y'all know what time it is. We back at it again, man. It is the Hump Day Happy Hour Tap In. I'm your host, Jay Walker the Third. That's my co-host, Carolina Dirt 803. What's going on, bro? You a statue? You frozen? What's going on? Nah, man. Hump Day Happy Hour Tap In. I got I got my drink, but I ain't mix it, and I forgot my shot cup. So we're gonna see what it do. Yeah, we're gonna see what it do, man. Look. Like every episode that we do, man, it's uh, they all special to us. We talk about extraordinary people uh, that you might not even, you know, you run across people, you have small conversations, you never know what they did with their life, man. But this one is special. Um, we have an extraordinary individual. Um, I'm going to read off just a couple of our accolades. We're going to get into all of them later, but introduction into the arizona state university hall of fame first woman to have her jersey retired uh by the university uh 396 career assists in only two seasons uh with the sun devils all pack uh 10 first team honors like i said there's way more to come but we'd like to introduce you to ronelda basenti good afternoon good evening how are you i'm doing great i'm doing great thank you for Inviting me on to this, I, I'm excited. We Absolutely. appreciate it. We appreciate it. Like, in a real way, like our podcast, we try to accentuate people. You know, you see people every day, but you're coming and going, and you never know that you might be standing next to somebody who did or is doing something super special. And that's what brings you to our platform today. I've- so, we normally start out with a quick game, uh, and we're going to do it today. It is called uh, First Call, and it's 10 quick questions. There's no right or wrong answer, just based on how you feel in the moment. So some of these things we may need to remix just based on, you know, whether you participate or not. But we're going to start with light or dark? Dark. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Fear of heights or fear of enclosed places? Fear of heights. Okay. You got any superpower of all the comic books and movies? Which superpower you want? Batman. Well, you want the money. Everybody want the money. <laughs> Batman's <laughs> Batman superpower is that he's filthy rich. That's dope. Filthy. Um, live on the reservation that's all you would you want to yeah (laughs) absolutely understand um first car you ever learned the first the car you learned to drive in uh 1976 chevy okay yeah like a box chevy the old police car no police car just a truck (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Like a CT. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So, my final question you in a room, there's no discerning character in the room. It's a white room, white chairs, white table. There's two empty seats. Dead or alive, who do you want to talk to in those two empty seats? My parents. That's my five. All right. So we go, you're on the West Coast. So we're going to go dry heat or humid heat. Which one worse? <laughs> humid. That's why I try to tell people. We in South Carolina, our heat, they be like, man, Arizona, they be 110, 115. But this 96 here and the heat index be like 110. You be sweating. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's just say you practice and you're on the court. Uh, sweatpants or, or shorts, basketball shorts? All right. Uh, you you out there playing with the kids? Water balloons or water guns? 
Sound like you said balloons. All right. Uh, I seen you was on. She freezing up a little bit. All right, we'll wait for her to uh to reset. Well, that was three. We'll wait for her to reset. I hit her with two quick ones. But okay. until she reset, go ahead and read those stats. A couple more of them stats so people know she's serious on that court. Oh man, look, first Native American uh, to play in the WNBA. Um, she I got she to been, Arizona. I think she okay, back. You back? Go. Yeah, you back. I don't know if she back. Can you hear us? Go ahead, ask. ask Can you? Me. All right. Um, I saw you was a uh, Sesame Street favorite character on Sesame Street. I I think her Wi Fi messing up. Okay. You want to try to uh, re-click the link? You want to try to click the link and come back in? Okay. Is she freezing? I'm going to go or ahead lagging. and put her in. Yeah, there you go. So, um, Either way, she's the first Native American in the WNBA. Um, she tried out for the Olympic team with all the heavy hitters in the WNBA. Uh, Cynthia Cooper, Dawn Staley, Lisa Leslie. Um, the reason why she came to the uh, into our eyesight is because she was at the Final Four when South Carolina go Gamecocks. Um, South Carolina won their final four, the NCAA uh, AA championship. So, all right, she's trying to get it together here. And um, I always say, like, man, I've been alive a long time, man. I never had any real interaction with any indigenous or Native American people. And just to, for her to be the first one we went across with the accolades that she has is amazing. Yeah, wow. Yeah. There's some serious stats, bro. That's lifetime achievement. I'm telling you, girl, look, I went 3-3-3 three, three, and three in my intramural basketball league. That's my stat. I've, I've done way better than that in every sport I play. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, I can't compete with what she, she's done. I don't think there's too many. I, truthfully, there's people, if you look at all across all the sports, there's nobody. I think she's had her. She's in the Hall of Fame in like four different categories. Uh, high school Hall of Fame, Good. college Hall of Fame, junior college Hall of Fame. Yeah. And then 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 with her her background being uh I can't I can't uh I can't pronounce the word indigenous people. Right. Is that how you say, is that how you say it? Indigenous or Native American. That's what I want to ask her. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to. I'd like to speak to an individual to figure out what is the best way. You know what I'm saying? So that's what this is about. But while she's working on her technical issues, we're going to try to get this thing together. So let's just, uh, man, let's go. So we're going to go Cheryl Swoops or Cynthia Cooper. We just, I just ask you. You Cheryl. playing pickup. Yeah, you playing a pickup game. Either one. They both beat Martin. <laughs> they both beat Martin Cole and Tommy. Yeah, <laughs> one of the that, better episodes of Martin. Yeah. And that was and that was a dope concept to have uh, them three women come on the show. I, I thought that was very genius because that clip actually came on. It came on. It was either my YouTube timeline clip or Facebook timeline clip. Yeah, and, it, and, then, and they were talking about that shit. Spike Lee had that was right around the time they did the. Uh, if you were a certain age, you remember uh, the We Got Next movement that they did, where they was, you know, roaming around uh, New York City playing, you know, yeah. all at the, you know, at the Rucker and, and all kind of street ball parks in New York. So I think they I need think to bring that WNBA back. is finally gaining steam. I think social media helps it. 
because you can get to know people and the connection is there a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Like it's harder to do with, with like football when you got 56, 56 people on a team and their helmets is on their head 90% of the time that you see them. You know also, I also think it's because the NBA and social media, NBA as far as embracing them more. I know, I know Kobe, Kobe was a big, was a big supporter of the WNBA. He went to he went to a lot of games and he preached uh support the WNBA. Uh I think that social media and the fact of the the affiliation as far as the clothing line brands and stuff like that helps out the uh the WNBA because honestly in some aspects I like the WNBA better than the NBA as far as like Jack and Threes go you know WNBA does the basics. They they know they brought back the basis of basketball. They're not I ain't gonna say down. I like it better. No, I, I said some of the aspects. I said some of the aspects. Yeah. I think you get better technical basketball. That's basically what I was from, from the WNBA. I don't think uh, they Euro step don't look like four steps. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They don't uh, be Euro stepping from the three point line and doing a layup. Uh, people, and, and that's the other shit. You remember we, we asked Kryptonite last week about LeBron going down court in like three or four dribbles. You know how far down the court is in three or four dribbles? You had to walk. It's ninety four feet. You had you had to walk. Uh it's it's definitely different. I don't know what they consider travel no more. You know what I'm saying? When they call it, I'd be surprised. Because yeah. when they don't call it most of the time, they don't. They they showed one. I forgot who it was. It was back when LeBron was on Cleveland. It might have been the second time he was on Cleveland. I forgot who the player was. Man, that dude took like 18 steps. Never called it. And they put it in slow motion. That's what killed it. When they put it in slow motion, you're like, God, bro, you still taking steps? You done took 18. You done took four gather steps plus two more. I feel like, you know, they great athletes. I think the – the pay disparity is bananas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, we definitely got to even it up. So if this dude can earn two, three hundred million over 10 years, they should be able to earn 30 million. You know what I'm saying? And that's not asking a whole lot. But they don't They're have making 30 million. They don't have the fan turnout. Like I always say, um, that's the good thing. That's the Blessing of Don, of Don Staley coming to USC. Her games average more attendance than the WNBA than some WNBA games. So, oh yeah, you can get seventeen thousand, and I think they average in like thirteen. Yeah, but what I think men, the men don't average thirteen thousand a game. They don't, but their so, ticket prices are extra high too. To, you know, and it's a it's a it's a <laughs> it's a modeling show at the at the NBA games. You know, cats we dress down to the. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. No worries. No worries. Look, we've done worse. Yeah, I'm we've done worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got you ready or you need you need a couple more minutes. Uh, we're good. Okay. So real quick, cuz I saw I saw you uh what's your favorite uh character from Sesame Street? Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, am I? Am, I guess I'll say my last one is your personal of all the times you've hit the Hall of Fame. Which one meant the most? Arizona State Hall of Fame. All right, that was that was that was first call. We appreciate that awesome. segment. Yeah. Modify first call. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna get right to it in terms of growing up on the reservation. When did when did basketball become the thing for you, or is it something that you saw that made you pick up basketball? Like when when did that connection start? It started with my parents because they played reservation basketball, and I just became a gym rat and followed them to tournaments to tournaments. And they told me to you know get out there and warm up with them. And I started warming up and basically just became a gym rat. And I seen how they were winning awards and winning championships. And um, it's just the way the style of the game they played back in the day was uh, what I really wanted to do. And 
I think it was more of the women power of, you know, I wanted to just dominate because I knew I had the skill, but at the same time, I had to work real hard for it. So who was better, your mom or your dad? My mom. <laughs> <laughs> People always pick their mom. When they say their parents are athletes, they always pick the mom as the best was athlete. Was she a guard, too? She was a guard, too, yeah. Okay. Scorer or distributor? Score, both distributor, and at the same time, no three-pointer. But they could, at that time, those we that Native women could shoot that three from way down loud. <laughs> okay. So, so, you know, we, we uh, our parents were uh, military, so we bounced around. But every time we came down home to Charleston, South Carolina, even now, if you can't play on dirt, you can't play real basketball. You feel that way? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, dad, my dad would put a blindfold on me and have me dribble down the road blindfold and lose the ball. I had to... Um, figure out where the ball bounces and just to get that feeling of knowing that uh, he kind of, like I always say, my dad was always like a Navajo Phil Jackson. He knew, <laughs> okay. the, he knew the ins and outs of basketball and, you know, I get frustrated dribbling down the, the road on the, with rocks and everything and, you know, but that's just how he was like, that's how you have to feel where the basketball is at. You got to hear the bounce and just, you know, just little small things made a big difference. So by the time you got to the actual flat surface of hardwood court, you had that ball on the string. Exactly, yeah. Okay. I, so you, so who was the, who was, other than your parents growing up, who else was there that you looked up to as far as basketball? Other Cheryl than your Miller, parents. Cheryl Miller was um, the one that I really looked up to because um, – Back in the day, um, I seen her on the Olympic, um, playing in the Olympics and on TV. And I, a commentator said, look at that African-American lady, you know, she's standing out and she's opening doors for her people and everything. And when I heard that, I knew, I said, that's, that's who I want to be. Just like American and Miller's and I had that that's do doing any and I if, if it was gonna be me then why not me? Why why can't I do it? So I I put in all my hard work and told my parents that this is what I wanna do. This is my vision and I wanted to leave the reservation to to prove people wrong, to prove, I, I, you know, I, I had, had, I had uh, everything in my power, so nothing was going to stop me to, to doing that. I know that's right. So you went to, Scott, you know, after uh, Window Rock High School, you go to Scottsdale community does the competition did the competition level up as you were going through like from being a kid watching your parents to high school graduating high school in the junior college like what was that that leap in terms of talent or competition hey, her audio went out We'll get her back in a minute. Like this is so it, it like I said, it's super dope to see people's journey. Oh yeah, like I say, uh, <laughs> I wish my journey was so illustrious. But you know, you you when you're living in it, you don't see it, and then when it's over, you can take the time to appreciate it and acknowledge what you was really doing. You know, you look, as far as living in the moment, I guess you say you live in the moment. She was out there putting up stats that she probably wouldn't even think about because it wasn't it wasn't even about that. It was, it was for the love of the game. But then when it's all over, she sits back and look at it, and people are giving her her roses like, "Damn!" I what was that? crazy is 
just think about this. Being blindfolded, you bounce the ball off of your foot. Ain't no telling where that ball going. She, she in Arizona. <laughs> you don't know what's out there. Right. But I don't know. Like I said, I, I commend her for, for that, bro. That's that's serious. That's serious. That's hard work and dedication, man. Like when I first when I first saw it, I didn't realize her all her accomplishments was like that deep. Right. For sure. Like I was surprised they ain't even come out with a movie about her yet. I know Disney probably Disney need to be calling her. There's there's a place for it. It's yeah. an awesome story. Go ahead and get that Disney check. And then she can dribble on grass. She can get the kids out of dribbling on grass. But I mean, it's like even more important than that is, you know, representation matters. If you were young Navajo girl growing up on a on on a reservation, like she is, like she said about Cheryl, she's the trendsetter. She's the one that makes it possible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I know kids are looking up to her, man. Uh, boys and little girls, especially you know when you when you in that situation, just like anybody else, like you the one that made it out. It, it ain't even really about the money because if you if you look at all the places she done played, she done played overseas, she done played across the country, and like yeah. you made it out, you got to see the world. Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. you got to see the world doing something that you love doing. Like it don't get no better than that. Like, Who knew the little basketball would take you where where it took you? Uh, you know what I'm saying? All the, the – the, you know, you go through stages, especially with sports, and especially if your parents are into sports, you go through stages of you doing it because your parents want you to do it, then you do it because you love it, and then you do it because you hate it but you still love it. Then you're, you're on the fence. You want to keep doing it. Is it worth it? Then you fall in love, love with it again. It's – you know, sports is a, is a is a love story. People don't people don't understand. A lot of people don't understand. For the kids and for the parents, it's a love story. You know, I don't even know who it was. I saw. I don't know if it was a TikTok or a reel or whatever, but it was this. Uh, I'd say middle aged black woman. She was like she used to hoop when she was growing up, and she was the shit when she was growing up. And at that point, she said she hadn't touched the ball in like five years. And sat out there and hit like five jumpers in a row. Like I still got yeah. it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's that muscle memory. Yeah, I was looking at um, I got to find it now. Just because you said just because you said that story, and I know hopefully I can find it real quick. But I was watching it was Buddy from come on. Let me find it. Let me find it. It was oh the, the Carlton Duncan story. I don't even know who that is. Oh, bro! If you if you get a chance, I'll send it to you. He's on. It's on. Uh, it's on. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's like twenty six minutes long. Okay. So, but it was a star athlete. Went to school with uh, he went to high school. With, he went. To, did he go to? Was it high school? I think it was high school with Kenny Anderson. Okay. But then college with uh. He had a chance to play with Sam, whatever it was, Sam Cassell, whatever. Basically, he was a he was a high school star, like junior year or whatever. And uh, fast forward, get to the dope. He he transfers schools, doesn't make it out. End up getting the dope game, but his love of basketball is what always was always there. And they met, he didn't make it to the NBA, but he was NBA bound. Absolutely. Can you hear us, Ronaldo? Yes, I'm back. Sorry about that, Ben. Okay, no worries, no worries. So, where we kind of left off at is when you are transitioning, when you're transitioning from as a young girl into high school basketball, is there a steep change in the level of competition when you get to community college, or was it not until you got to Arizona State that you saw it was different? Um, it was a Big transition. Um, like I tell a lot of uh, kids, I wasn't just a girl. I was a tomboy. I was all the boys. And the transition, uh, 
going into Scottsdale Community College, I knew it was going to be tough because I um, played against, you know, black girls, white girls, and my dad knew it that I had to a level, you know, going to a community college. Uh, not knowing what I was going to get into at a community college and leaving the reservation, I never really had a lot of experience playing uh, in Phoenix or out of state. So my level of play to develop where I had to be a lot more quicker, faster. And so at that point, I knew what I developed. So my dad kind of already had an idea of what kind of transition I needed to make. Was, Absolutely. Do you feel like in the transition part, was it the transition of being on the court or the transition of off the court? Both, both on and off the court. Um, realizing I was a Native American, realizing I was um, coming off the reservation, um, not just for being on the court, but but more like the of you know I have to get education no matter what. I had to make that transition because in high school, you know, I was a very good student. You know, I did what I had to do to but knowing I had to go to college. Um, leaving the reservation is very hard for a lot of Native Americans because going to college, you can you can be in another statistic, go back to the res, and you know. But for me personally, I was basically I was on a on a mission to to strive to be the best that because I knew that's what I wanted to do because it was just it was it was a dream that I had for a long time. So how was your how was your first game in, in community college? Oh, it was unbelievable. Um, you know, scoring scoring maybe fifteen points, getting dishing out dimes and you know, realize I like, I'm actually better than most of these most of these ladies, you know. I was right. and like, hey, I'm I'm actually better than all of them. And I always remember I Cheryl Swoop played at a community college in Texas. And I remember she came to Scottsdale Community College and she jumped like 50 points on me because I have, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and I went, we went to Texas to play her out there in a, in a tournament. And I was like, I held my ground to hold her to 30. And I was like, I'm happy with that. <laughs> right. Right. But I seen Cheryl at some of the, you know, some of the tryouts, we, we always laugh about it. And I was like, oh, man, it was just an amazing just to know I can always tell kids. I know Cheryl Swoop, you know, she, she we played against each other. And, you know. One and, of the best yep, in the okay. game. Of course, of course, one of the best. She she dropped, she dropped 30 on you quick or it was like 30 and, and they took her out? You just dropped 30 on me. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it matters if it's quick or throughout the whole game. She posted me up. She took me outside. And my coach, you know, at the junior college level, he he didn't care. He kept me on, and I'm like, "What are you trying to do, embarrass?" <laughs> what can you say you learned from those couple of games that you encountered her? Was there anything that you picked up off of her game or learned defensively that you was able to? build on and take, you know, take to the next level? Well, what I learned from it was I had to get stronger. I had to get quicker. I had to learn how to read people that were bigger, taller, stronger than me. I had to mm -hmm. learn this, and that's what my dad had told me was you got to learn which way they can go. Every player has a certain routine of how to get off with the ball uh, and everybody shoots from the waist and you know, I had to study tape and just figure out, and that's what I had to do because I was a small guard. My defense wasn't very good, but the only thing I had to do was really uh, watch a lot of tape and work on my footwork. So I took a lot away from it, especially, especially. I mean, Carol Swoops, man, that was. I mean, she was she it. talking shit or was she a silent assassin? <laughs> she didn't talk nothing. She just. Her game spoke for itself, you know. Man, she just bust your ass quiet. <laughs> Damn. You ain't called the law. I would have called the law, man. Hey. <laughs> and 
white Neville is me, we don't talk shit, you know, we just, all right, you know, I, <laughs> and I'll get you back, I'll get you back, you know, but he was so good, I mean, this, I mean, I've never came, he was the first one I can't encounter that was, oh man, it was, it was crazy. So, so let me ask you this, because you, because you mentioned it, you said you watch, you watch tape. How valuable is that? Is it a lost art or is it something strong that you you see today? It well in this day it's lost art for the younger generation. But back in my day, uh, my dad, like I said, we sat down. My coach sat down with me and we went over every little thing about how to guard so and so, how to do this, you know. And that was one of the big things for me. And like uh, my dad, we said, you know, basketball's like chess. You know, playing the game of chess, you gotta, you gotta figure it out for yourself, and that's what I did. I think that's what took me a long way uh, into ASU and the WBA is just figuring out the game of basketball was just figuring out what strategies, and it wasn't just about my team, but it was the team that the opponent I was playing. It was I, I had to figure them out. So, so. You go from Scottsdale community, you get to ASU. That's another jump, another giant leap in, in talent. That's you having a little experience away from the reservation. How comfortable are you when you get to, to ASU? Well, uh, the thing that I was doing Froze up again. Must be that heat in Arizona. It's affecting the Wi Fi. Let's see if it see if it reset. Yeah, um man, I, I hate that we having the difficulties, but I know exactly what it is. You know what I'm saying? She is of the Navajo tribe, she is really on a reservation, and that connection may not be that great. But we're gonna try to get her back here to try to get this thing, uh, get some more information, man. Like, I definitely am, am digging, digging what's going on. Well, let's see, is your audio straight now, Mr. Nobby? Still yeah. a little choppy, yeah. Your audio is bad. Up, froze again, but yeah, it got to be that heat in Arizona. Fucking up Wi Fi, yeah. <laughs> fucking up Wi Fi, bro. bro. It was 126 today in Columbia. I don't I know what it went out though. I'm about it to was, say it was, but it was hot shit. But she did answer my question though, because everybody be screaming that heat shit, and I'd be like, bro, if you ain't been to South Carolina, our heat different around here. Yeah, absolutely. Our heat make you get right with somebody and make you want to fight somebody. So we, we didn't catch a lot of that, unfortunately, but you were talking about the transition from, from community college to ASU. Is that a red, white, and blue? I was, I was a patent blue ribbon, a PBR? I don't know if she hit the audio or not. Yeah, she drinking a PBR. Also, if she drinking a PBR, she a G. <laughs> you drink, hey, you gotta be a soldier she a G anyway, because she is. She is. She type probably down drop thirty and throw a beer can at you. Get your weight up, right? Get your weight up. Post you up. 
Yeah, yeah, pulls you up, drop buckets. I got, I got buckets. Man. Well, I finished my thing without, I ain't got no more chaser. Well, this was a uh, this was supposed to be a highly educational episode because a lot of people don't know. My brother been trying to get uh, Native American on this show for like a long time. We were looking, and like I said, her story popped up on my TikTok timeline, and I was just like, "Wow!" Like it don't get no better than this. A, a Native American plus somebody who has. She told me the dopest shit. When I was looking for a bio, I was like, hey, you want to send me your bio? She said, Google me. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that's gangster shit. Yeah, that's, that's gangster, gangster shit. shit. So that's what I'm saying. Like to be to be 100 percent Native American. And nah, you could tell you could tell about to Google you. Right. Well, the reason why is you know, as African Americans, black folks, um, it seemed like sometimes we on the bottom of the totem pole, you know what I'm saying? And if anybody's been done wrong in the history of the world, cause it's like the native Americans and, and just the way that they've been treated, the way they've been kind of relegated to specific parts of this country that they even say they didn't own it, but they was here. Yeah. They got more, more state to it than, you know, some of the other people, the white people, let's just be real. They, they got more claim to it than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like that spirit of, I'm glad that we were able to talk about the sports, but I definitely wanted to get into, you know, just what it is to, to grow up on the yeah. reservation and what that life is like. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Um, it's always, they, they are forgotten about a lot when it comes to to the American history, and they are American history. Yeah, you know they they are American mm -hmm. history, and they don't they don't get talked about. Um, you it's have your, people just rolled up here on this big rock. It was yeah. like we was here for us. Yeah, like you can't Plymouth Rock wasn't the whole country because you can't say you own everything. <laughs> they they got here and owned everything. They everything because cut it up. Yeah, they took it. They took it from somebody who was already here. That's like, hey, how you say how Goody Bob said, Big Gip. That's like you walking in the house and not wipe your feet on the on the yeah. rug. Almost exactly. Yeah, Almost exactly. But uh, nah, it would it would been dope. I I did want to swing the the conversation more towards that than it was basketball. But I did want to acknowledge because, like I said. I was like, hey, you got a small bio? She like, Google me. And then I Googled her, and I saw this laundry list of shit, and I was just like, yeah, that got to at least be said. But I did want to get into the culture, you know, uh, a little bit maybe of our favorite foods, but just to know that these people have a long history here. And what she's, and what she's done and what she's doing with the youth and the kids, it'll put, it would definitely put more Indians on the map, if not give them more motivation that they can succeed further in the world. And it's dope because if you think about it, of course we had African Americans on this show. We've had white people on this show. We've had we've had uh the Indian. We had we had Sherwin, the uh, a, a Middle Eastern Indian. Yeah. We, we, we had him on the show. He's not yeah. Indian, he's uh Iranian, damn. Iranian, there you go. Yeah, I fucked that up. I apologize. I'm about to say, <laughs> I apologize. A Middle Eastern Indian, no, Iranian. Yeah. There she okay. go. <laughs> Sorry about that again. No worries, no worries at all. So, so hold up, what's what you drinking in that can? Because that was a conversation while you was a Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, we thought you had a PBR. <laughs> Red, white, and. <laughs> she said, "No, I'm out here with the kids, man. We don't do that with the kids." <laughs> so we were we left off where like you get to ASU, and 
this is this is big. This is a big deal. This is Pac-10. Now you're dealing with the best competition in the country. You know what I'm saying? So you adjusting to leaving home. You know, you went to community college. You got away for a little bit. Now you're on this level. So when you reach ASU, how are you feeling mentally? And then how are you feeling about the game of basketball? Well, mentally, I knew it was going to be a very, uh, you know, I, it was going to be a long road ahead of me. But I knew, like, I had to work extra, extra hard and put in a lot of work because, like my dad said, it's not going to be easy. And um, my goal wasn't to sit on the bench. My goal was to be the starting point guard for ASU. And I knew I had to run the stairs. I had to put in a lot of work and and that's what I did and um, it was just the motivation that drove me to um, just being inspired uh, to be there and right. I knew uh, like I said, I always had a vision to want to be the best point guard in Arizona and you showcase my talent no matter what and that's what I did. It was just for me so did you feel like in all your steps of you know high school community college did you feel like you were fighting for indians or were you fighting for your family name or were you just fighting as being an athlete fighting for all of the above i was fighting for women power i was fighting yeah. for being native man i was fighting for community i was fighting for everything because you know it it was a struggle not only for me but just the struggle of the fact that it you know a lot of native the and then they don't want to you know they don't want to fulfill me but for me i know a different sense. Yeah, your uh, your audio, your audio, and your Wi-Fi going up. Parent. No coaches, no colleges went to go. their dream. Their dream because. Well, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit different, man. We we gonna we might have to try to reschedule this to get like a better connection, because mm -hmm. uh, like no bullshit, man, like. <laughs> This is such a good story. Um, have you been following lately the Uvalde shit? Like, they fucked that shit all the way up. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. It, 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 it's bad. It's bad. And me and me and, me and your pops, which is my pops, which is the same pops, we, we got into a heated debate the week that it happened about... Uh, the cops attempts and I said was well, she back what okay <laughs> now we know it's difficult it's a it's a it's a work in progress and like we said we might want to do this again because you know the people that are watching or listening they're not getting everything but what percentage of Native Americans were at ASU when you went there? Probably like 10% of students, but I was the only one that was playing basketball. So they looked up to you. Yes. And not many people knew who I really was until they came to the games and saw me. And, and then ASU went from about 100 people to over a thousand people started coming to the games 
Native Americans coming in and giving me that support, that strength, that energy, that motivation. and That's got to be awesome. Yeah, it made me want to keep inspiring. And just to put on that uniform for ASU was, was just to represent my Native people and and open those doors like Cheryl Miller did. And, and a lot of kids, it just, it just made them feel happy, not just the Native Americans, but, you know, all the elderlies and the grandmas, the aunties and people just embraced that I was on the court and showcasing my talent and my ability. Was there, cause we can be real, like we live in America. Were, were there people there that that tried to make it hard for you? Of course. Uh, my short hair, I was a tomboy and got a lot of racist remarks. Um, not many people thought I was Mexican. People didn't know I was Navajo, Native American. And, um, you know, but I avoided all that. Um, stayed to myself, silent, and just let the basketball point of who I was and you know the most hostile crowd I honored was at uh, Washington the Huskies uh, you know booed me and you know called me Pocahontas and all the and it again you know I was like this because we end up winning in there so absolutely it was, it was you know it, it, you know, the t- it comes with the territory of being Native American, but basketball, basketball, I just see people wrong with just playing the game of basketball and and being proud of who I am. Are there two? Are there still teammates from ASU that you keep up with? Oh, for. Just being a uh, lot of uh, still, and I always get thanked because of them, you know, all my coaches from elementary to middle school to high school. Uh, I give credit to all of them for all the accolations that I've been receiving. It's, it's because of them, you know, and be more proud of it and just, you know, being supportive and being proud of what I've been doing. Absolutely, absolutely. So what are you doing these days? Do you have an organization that you work with uh, to teach and mentor uh, young kids, young women? I do not have an organization. Everything I do, I I do free basketball camps because living on the reservation ever since the ever since the COVID uh, we don't have any gyms open. We don't some of my friends either outside or just I just put on a free Well that's something that we need to get the people on, uh, man. Like I feel like like I said, you have such a motivational story. You have a story that can touch a lot of people. Um, whatever we need to do, you know, to share that story, to bring light to, you know, what's going on, to get you that that facility and that funding that you might need to have a real good, you know, camp, get some people out there to support you and, you know, make something exciting happen for the younger generation. Pros again. Yeah. Crazy. Sure. She kind of looked like Dawn a little bit. But that, who? She like Dawn Stanley a little bit with her hat. Bro, that old that old <laughs> basketball picture of her, she dancing like Dawn, old baggy jersey. Yeah. Yeah, running down the court playing point guard. But that she can hear us. It's kind of in and out still. Yeah, but shit, my power went out. 
Is that what just happened? Yeah, that's why I was I was in complications. My my, my power went out. The whole thing blacked out. Yeah. You can hear us. Yeah. You must be on the Verizon network. I know I'm on the Verizon okay. network. <laughs> but I but I right here. What is that? Okay. That's a Don Staley shirt that she gave me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got to keep okay. that. She, she gonna win. She gonna win another three championships over these next five years. So that that's gonna be definitely gonna be a collector's item. Yeah, I follow her on uh, on social media. Uh, if y'all get a chance, viewers, follow Don Staley yeah, on Instagram. Okay, so we're about to get this thing wrapped up right now. The, um, what I want to ask you is, and I hope I hope we can get a clear connection for you to answer. I want you to give me five of your most important Navajo people that people should know about. Whether they be, you know, elders, doctors, other athletes, science, whatever they may be, whoever they may be. My cousin, who's uh, retired from the Indian Hospital and been a runner for the COVID, Rainy Chris, who's a uh, Head coach at Navajo Prep for 13 years. Uh, Grant Hobbs also, also interned at Faith, Faith, Faith. You know, uh, then Peter, Peter, me, and he's a fan. I'm sorry, I got the first name. You said Peter. I didn't hear his last name. Uh, a, a former Navajo in prison and works for Air University. This is awesome, awesome information. Dr. Adriana Bay, who's my cousin. Uh, so, Ray Chris. Okay. We're going to get these names and we're going to print them up and we're going to put them in the uh, comment section of this episode so that people can look up and know who your important, who, who your important uh, Navajo family members are. So the one thing that we try to get out of this is to learn and to just consider other cultures in life man um we like to have fun we like to drink we like to talk shit and be funny it comes from a good place you know what i'm saying um like i said i wish we had a little bit better quality connection uh for this story we're gonna try to maybe reschedule this and uh have a better situation for miss Pacenti. Um, I know what's going on because I've done a little research. You have her name. You should do your own research and just find out about who Ronel De Basenti is. And Google why her story is important. Like she Google. said, my brother, Google me, player. You want to know something? Uh, <laughs> hey, you got to you got to be somebody to get Google. Oh. Whether it be good or bad, it all depends on what's written. But you got to be somebody to be Google. We had the last call, brother. Um, this hour went by pretty quickly. Uh, what you want to tell the people? Uh, yeah, just, just be aware of other cultures, other people's backgrounds. Um, there's people out here that have a history that needs to be taught, needs to be learned. Um, it's not just one type of person on this earth. 
Um, there's many different ones. Uh, be subjective and objective. And just, just, just give people a chance, man. We worry about the stuff that really don't matter. Whether they're heterosexual or gay or lesbian. Whether they got a job or not. Whether they... Republic. Whether they, yeah, like that stuff is surface. That's just surface level. Like this woman, when you Google her and you look at all the stuff she's accomplished and what she gives back to her community, like that. That mean that means a lot. Like that's that's who you are as a person, man. That's when people talk about lifetime achievements. She's already reached those. When people talk about Will my name be heard after I'm dead and gone? Like she has that, you know. We worried about the color of people's skin instead of instead of what they what have they done for others. What kind like of that's a problem. Yeah, or you know, like you said, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the conservative part, the the lobbyists, like all that shit really don't matter in the end. But we need to take the time to learn other people, man. If we learn other people. I'm not saying racism and prejudice will slow down if we just take time to learn. That's all I'm saying. It'll slow down, and it's slowing down is powerful because that means we learn it from each other. We can't just assume somebody a certain way. The last time I checked, if we all in kindergarten, we all in kindergarten, ain't it? That's a word, man. Like I say, um, <laughs> do your part to improve the human condition, man. Um don't be a victim to the bully. Always stand up and defend yourself, but lead with love, man. We got to do more with that than we can do with the evil. We got enough evil going on around us, and um, it ain't really shaking nothing, man. Like, for all the bad news that they put out, we still here. So for every day that you hear, you know what I'm saying, lead with love and do something to improve the human condition. This has been another episode of the Bottom of the Bottle Show, the Hump Day Happy Hour Tap In. I'm Jay Walking the Third. That's Carolina Dirt 803. Hey, we gone until the next time. And uh, y'all be easy. Be easy.